जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी चन वाला गिरिवार दारी गोपी चन वाला गिरिवार दारी यशोदनांदन प्रचचन रंजन यशोदनांदन प्रचचन रंजन यमुनती रावन चारी यामुनती रावन चारी जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी कुंज बिहारी जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी चन वाला बागिरिवर दाई गोपी चन वाला बागिरिवर दारी गोपी चन वाला बागिरिवर दारी यशोदनांदन प्रजजन रंजन यशोदनांदन प्रजजन रंजन यमुनती रावन चारी यामुनती रावन चारी जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
ಜಾಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾತ್ಮ ನಮಸ ಪ್ರವರ್ಜಿಕಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೋತರ ಶತ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಶಿಲಭಾಯಿ ಶರ್ಮಿಂದ ಭಕ್ತ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಹರಾಟ್ ಶಿಲ್ಪಾದ ಕಿ ಜಯ್ ಅನಂತ ಕೋತಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ್ ನಮ ಶರಶ ಹರಿದಾಸ್ ತಕ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ್ ಪ್ರೀಂ ಸಿಖೋ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಸದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ್ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ ಶ್ಯಾಮಕುಂದ ರಾಧಕುಂದ ಗಿರಿ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ್ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರ ಪರಮನಂದೆ ಹರಿ ಗಿರಿ ಬೋನ್ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಸೆ ಸಂಪಲ್ ಡಿವತೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಸೆ ಸಂಪಲ್ ಡಿವತೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಸೆ ಸಂಪಲ್ ಡಿವತೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಸೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರಂಗ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಸೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಪಾತ್ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪುಷ್ಟ ಪುತ್ರಿ ಶಿವನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಜಂಬೆ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪುಷ್ಟ ಪುತ್ರಿ ಶಿಂಬತಿ ಭಾಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪರಶರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯ ಪ್ರತಿ ಪಶ್ಚತರ್ಣಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ವಿ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕಂತ ಥ್ರೀ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನೈನ್ chapter 16 has in, uh, is entitled chai and vijay cursed by the sages yesham bibarmya hamakanda vikunta yoga yesham bibarmya hamranda vikunta yoga maya vibhutir amalangri rajah kiritahi ವಿಪ್ರಾಂಸ್ತು ಕೋ ನ ವಿಷೇತಯತರ್ಹ ಸಾತಿ ಸಹ ಚಂದ್ರಲೋಕನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಸ್ ಬಿಭರ್ಮಿ ಐ ಬ ಅಹಂ i akhanda unbroken vikuntha unobstructed yoga maya internal energy vibhuti opulence amala pure angri of the feet rajah the dust kiritaihi on my helmet vipran the brahmanas tu then kah hu na not vishahita carry yat of the supreme lord arhana ambaha water which has washed the feet sadyah at once punati sanctifies sah along with chandralalama lord shiva lokan the three worlds translation and purport by his divine grace shila propat ki jay i am the master of my unobstructed internal energy and the water of the ganges is the remnant left after my feet are washed that water sanctifies the three worlds along with lord shiva who bears on it on his head if i can take the dust of the feet of the vaishnava on my head who will refuse to do the same purport the difference between the internal and external energies of the supreme personality of godhead is that in the internal energy or in the spiritual world all the opulences are undisturbed whereas in the external or material energy all the opulences are temporary manifestations 
The Lord's supremacy is equal in both the spiritual and material worlds, but the spiritual world is called the kingdom of God and the material world is called the kingdom of Maya. Maya refers to that which is not actually fact. The opulence of the material world is a reflection. It is stated in, the, in Bhagavad Gita that this material world is just like a, a tree whose roots are up and branches down. This means that the material world is the shadow of the spiritual world. Real opulence is in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, the predominating deity is the Lord himself, whereas in the material world, there are many Lords. That is the difference between the internal and external energies. The Lord says that although he is the predominating factor of the internal energy, and although the material world is sanctified just by the water that has washed his feet, he has the greatest respect for the Brahmana and Vaishnava. When the Lord himself offers so much respect to the Vaishnava and the Brahmana, how can one deny such respect to such personalities? Om Magyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gravi Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupah Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shra Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam he Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Behivacha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasa Digora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna so today we continue uh, the discussion um, about how Lord Vishnu uh, tried to pacify uh, for Kumaras with glorifying Brahmanas. And um, here we can see from this verse that <coughs> in Sanskrit verse uses the word uh, vipra. Vipram's to Kurna Bishahita Yadarha Nambaha. And Prabhupada translates, uh, translates it as <coughs> the Vaishnava. Um, so, <coughs> the verse itself speaks about Brahmanas because the Lord wanted to pacify those four Brahmanas. Uh, but um, Prabhupada translates it as a Vaishnava that he takes the Lord uh, um, is explaining that he takes the dust of the feet of the Vaishnava on my head. Uh, so why do you think that uh, Prabhupada translates it like this? Real Brahmana. Brahmana, in fact, means what? Mm, 
Yes, exactly. One who knows Brahman. And Brahman is one aspect of Krishna. Vedanti tattva vidas tattvam yaj gyanam advayam. This is advay gyan. Brahmati paramatmati bhagavan iti shabdati. That means that Krishna is Brahman. Or in fact, Brahman is Krishna. There is no difference. Just uh, one aspect of Krishna is Brahman. And he also explains uh, Brahman, uh, uh, how is Brahman now? He pratishta aham, amritasya vivasya cha. So he's the, mm, mm, the basis of Brahman. Uh, so anyone who is really a, a Brahmana, um, he should be Vaishnava. Otherwise, uh, it is explained here he uses the, the name for Brahmana Vipra. Viprat Vishad Gunaitata Ravindanaba Pada Ravinda Vimukashva Bacham Varishtam Manyeta Dartita Mano Vachanehi Tarta Pranam Punati Sakulam Natuburi Manaha. It is explained in seventh canto of, uh, of Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, those Brahmanas who are not Vaishnavas so-called brahmanas that are not Vaishnavas are lower than dog eaters. <laughs> and they cannot, uh, and the, the dog eaters who are devotees are, are uh, they can purify not only themselves, but only their f- whole families. But those brahmanas that are not Vaishnavas, they cannot even purify themselves, what to speak of others. <laughs> so, uh, we can see from, from these statements that this um, mm, birth in so-called Brahmana family does not mean that we are Brahmanas uh, mm, automatically. Uh, we should behave like Brahmanas. And it is explained in Bhagavad Gita, that Brahmanas are um, peaceful and tolerant and those qualities were not in, uh, found in four Kumaras. <laughs> they are not peaceful and not tolerant. And uh, they were angry and anger is Kamanuja the younger sister of karma, of lust, of material desire. So um, their anger is expression of, of, of um, their false identification uh, with their bodies, in fact. Yes. Um, okay. So we should understand that real Brahmana is Vaishnava. If, and, and Vaishnava means that he has already transcended these uh, mm, qualifications of different Varnas and Ashramas. Um, <coughs> so real Brahmana has to transcend uh, this understanding mm, of bodily uh, differences. So, uh, and he, here the Lord explains that he is the master of unobstructed internal energy. Um, and as we know from um, the scriptures and from Bhagavad Gita, uh, that the devotees are always uh, seeking and taking shelter of the Lord's internal energy. Um, Mahatmanas to Mamparta, Devim Prakritim Ashita, Bajanya Nanemanas, O Gyatva Buddha, the Mavia. Mahatmas are always taking shelter of my internal energy. And this is explained that um, here in this verse n- from ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, um, <coughs> uh, it indicates uh, Radharani. <laughs> This Devi Prakritim uh, Ashita that they take shelter of Radharani. Yeah. 
And those who don't take shelter, uh, is explained one verse before, Mugasha Moga Karma no Moga Gyana Vichitas, Rakshasim Asurim Jiva, Prakritim Mohinim Shitaha. They take shelter of Prakritim Mohinim, <laughs> the, the illusory energy, the illusory energy. And Mugasha uh, Moga Karma, all their hopes are, um, are in vain. Moga means in vain. And Ashaha means uh, hopes. And Moga Karma, and all their activities, all their endeavors are in vain. Mugasha <laughs> um, Moga Karma, no Moga Jnana, and all their knowledge is in vain. Moga Jnana Vichitasa, Rakshasim Asurim Cheva. And here Krishna is very extremely uh, harsh uh, explaining the, the material consciousness. Those who are not Mahatmas are Duratmas, uh, far away from Krishna. Duratma means the, the soul who is away, far away from Krishna. And those Duratmas are uh, Rakshasim Asurim. <laughs> They're like Rakshasas and as Asuras. Yes. And Rakshasas are who? Man eaters. Exactly. So every living entity that is not devotee is actually Rakshasa. His, his, his um, blood drinkers. <laughs> um, yes, and, and what does it mean? This is not just uh, some statements to attract uh, to, uh, attention of Krishna. Um, it has deep meaning because um, if we are not devotees, uh, every relationship that we uh, have in this material world is in fact a mutual exploitation. Is expecting something from the other. Uh, and this mutual ex exploitation means eating, in fact. And uh, so even mothers uh, who has the most pure love uh, in this world, it is considered to be the mother's love that's most pure, most similar to, to uh, spiritual love. But it is still some expectation is there from their children. So even in this relationship, uh, which is supposed to be most pure, is still some rakshasa nature. <laughs> it's hard to, to hear, but uh, it is true. Um, and Krishna uses this language just to uh, wake us up. Because if we are not awakened to, to this absolute truth, we will uh, still um, try to find some some happiness and 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 um, security in in uh, external energy in in this prakriti mohinim yes um, and asurim of course if we don't surrender to krishna then that means that we are asuras uh, that we are not godly but we are demonic <laughs> mm, because we don't shelter, shelter of Krishna. Uh, so, the Lord is master of his internal energy, S um, and that means that we should take shelter of his internal energy. Yes. And the water of the Ganges is the remnant left after my feet are washed. Mm. This is before... Um, appearance of 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 Vamanadeva. But still uh, Ganges is eternal uh, Charinamrita of the Lord. It's not something that uh, appeared uh, somewhere in, in, in the past uh, but it is eternal eternal Charinamrita of the Lord. And at that time um Yes, uh, Vamana pierced the covering of the universe 
and um, here it is said that although um, Vamana um, pierced the, the universe, uh, in that time also Lord Shiva uh, bears, uh, buried in, in on his head the Ganges water. So Lord Shiva is also eternal, like Lord Vishnu. Sadashiva is is in fact Vishnu Tattva. So we should not um, disrespect Lord Shiva because he is Vaishnavana Mayatashambhu. He is the most uh, elevated Vaishnava. Mm. Okay. So and and the Lord here explains that he um, takes the dust of the feet of the Vaishnava on his head. Uh, and we explained also yesterday that Aradhanam um, Sarvasham Vishnora Radhanam Param Tasmat Paratram Devi Tadiyanam Samarchanam that the worship of Lord's devotees and everything connected with the Lord is even superior to worship of Lord Vishnu. Yes, and so he is keeping the dust of the Vaishnavas always on his head. Uh, that means that Lord uh, is the servant of his servants. And what does it mean that the Lord is the servant of his servants? That he has great love for the devotees, yes. The control, he, he's under control of uh, the love of his devotees. Yes, yes. Uh, so love is more powerful than Krishna himself, <laughs> who is most powerful. And Krishna is one who attracts everyone, therefore his name is Krishna. But uh, Prema uh, attracts him, is Sri Krishna Akarshini. So, his uh, prema has uh, is more potent than than Krishna himself, because he is attracted to to prema, <laughs> and it is explained that uh, mm, he is attracted to bhakti, because bhakti is cause of prema, and. Um, Prima is one one um, aspect of bhakti, the highest aspect of bhakti. But bhakti itself is so attractive, uh, is explained by, by Jiva Goswami, uh, that um, the Lord uh, is attracted even to sadaka bhaktas, <laughs> not just prima bhaktas. Of course, um, they have to be purified first. But um, they cannot be purified by themselves. Yes. Shrimatasva kata krishna punya shavana kirtana. Hirdyanta stohya badr nividu noti suhritsatam. That uh, is explained that uh, Lord Himself, when He is satisfied with His devotees, they purify by, uh, when they hear and chant about the Lord's glories. He purifies them from within their hearts. So it's not in our power to purify our hearts. It's Lord's mercy. Um, and, and by this purification only, uh, we can attain higher states of bhakti. Mm. And, and prema, of course. So uh, Lord is attracted even by sadhana bhakti. Not, not just prima. Mm. Okay. Mm. So we can see from here that uh, Lord is extremely merciful also to to these uh, brahmanas who are offensive, in fact. Um, and uh, how we can know that they are offensive? 
because they cursed <laughs> Vaishnavas. Uh, it is explained. It is explained that um, the first offense is to be disrespectful to to the Vaishnavas, and. Uh, mm, this disrespect to the Vaishnavas are, uh, have different categories, if you, as you may remember. And one of uh, the, f- the the most mild offense to the Vaishnavas is what? Mild. Um, Yes, what is in the mind is not considered an offense in Kali Yuga. Uh, but what expression? To ignore them? N- not to be happy when we see them. Uh. <laughs> and they were, of course, not happy <laughs> when they saw Jai and Vijay. But not only that, the most Severe offense to the Vaishnavas is what? Curse. No. It's to kill them. To kill Vaishna- Vaishnava is most severe offense. And here, by cursing them to go to material world, in fact, they, they were cursing them to die. <laughs> because material world is Martya Loka. The, uh, the, the world of death. So they... In fact, they, they tried to kill them. <laughs> and um, uh, the Lord killed them many times as, as, as demons. So, um, this was Nama Parada from, from uh, Four Kumaras. So, we should, uh, this story is, is teaching us how uh, important it is to be. To be to be afraid of aparada, of Vaishnava aparada especially, um, and and uh, to to um, be attracted to the Lord who is so merciful that even though these people were committing aparadas to uh, to the Vaishnavas, and if he is is extremely um, significant and and. Uh, Interesting to see how Jai and Vijay reacted. They didn't counter curse them, but in fact they were much more powerful personalities than four Kumaras. They were eternal uh, associates of the Lord and um, extremely powerful, and they could of course counter curse. No problem <laughs> for them. Uh, but they didn't. They uh, they were asking forgiveness from four Kumaras. So th- this was their tolerance. They exhibited their tolerance and 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 uh, peace and everything that they should exhibit. The four Kumaras should exhibit as if they would really be um, self-realized brahmanas. <laughs> But they were not. They became angry and intolerant and they cursed Vaishnavas. But Vaishnavas who could curse, also counter curse, they didn't. They asked forgiveness. And when Brigumuni tested these uh, three personalities, um, Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu, Brahma became angry although he didn't ex- uh, express his anger when, when he was disrespected by Brigu Muni. Um, and Shiva, uh, and this was mental offense because he didn't offer his obeisance. And, uh, and, and, but, but Brahma became upset, angry with, with him, but he controlled his anger. But when he came to, to Shiva, Shiva wanted to embrace his brother, <laughs> Brigu. <laughs> but he said, you're a filthy guy, um, don't touch me. <laughs> so it was, this was verbal offense, and Shiva wanted to kill him. Uh, and, and then 
uh, he came to Vaikuntha to, to Lord Vishnu and he, he kicked him on his chest but the Lord with, 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 with his concert Lakshmi Devi on his bed with her so it was bodily offense of the worst possible manner because he was along with his wife <laughs> uh, but what uh, did Vishnu do? he apologized that he didn't notice and, and he, he massaged the feet of, of Brigo uh, and explained um, and, and, and asked him for forgiveness because he has so hard chest and that he didn't hurt his foot uh, he hoped that, that Brigo didn't hurt his foot <laughs> this was his concern, completely um, uh, mild and, and, and meek uh, uh, in front of Brigu Muni. Uh, and so um, these two Vaishnavas, Jai and Vijay, also acted like this, exactly the same manner. They were asking forgiveness from for Kumaras, but they were uh, completely intoler uh, intolerant. Uh, and and prepared to, to curse, and they cursed, in fact, Jaya and Vijaya. Uh, and here the Lord is acting in the same way as Jaya and Vijaya. He's very tolerant. He even glorifies Brahmanas, although they didn't behave like Brahmanas. <laughs> yes, and um, just to pacify them. Uh, and the consequence of this offense is, of course, as we s explained yesterday, that they, uh, they couldn't enter Vaikuntha. They just has, had to return back to the material world. Okay, we'll stop here. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, please. You were mentioning how the Muhammad's take shelter the Daisy practice. Yes. Those who are uh, rakshasas, they take shelter in the pure land of Jesus. Yes. But um, it seems like the material entity is forced upon the living entity more than the living entity is taking shelter of it. Yes. Um, but we nevertheless take shelter of it. Because we always take shelter of something. Um, uh, shelter means what? Protection. protection. Yes. So we seek protection in this world. We seek, uh, for example, those who are not devotees, uh, soldiers. They they call their mo mother mm -hmm. if they're in in danger. This is well known. So they take shelter of their mother, but mother is illusory energy so they take shelter in illusory energy or we uh, take shelter of some insurance company uh, to be secure or we take shelter um, we, uh, of our education or, or medical care or somehow or other some, something in this material world and we don't count on Krishna so this is prakriti uh, mohinim shitaha that they take shelter of of uh, illusory energy because this energy will not protect them the energy will kill them <laughs> will kill them all without any consideration without any mercy <laughs> but those who take shelter of krishna of course they they do care also on material platform how to deal with things um they are not careless in this regard, but they know that only Krishna is the real shelter. And if Krishna wants, he can, can kill them. And if he wants, he can protect them. But everything, they, they, uh, they are aware that everything is Krishna's protection, in fact. Even if he kills their body, and still they are protected. But those who don't take shelter of Krishna count that um, these different material shelters will will protect them from calamity 
and the the worst calamity for them is of course uh, to lose the existence whatever they uh, m mean by this um, many different um, in many different ways we can lose our existence in material world for example for for honorable person this honor is a uh, loss of existence and for for those who want to be um, young and powerful old age and invalidity is loss of existence and so we have many uh, aspects of losing of existence um, an ultimate loss of existence is of course death itself yes <laughs> so we can see that uh, in fact we do take shelter um, it's not just something external that we are forced to live in but we also choose to uh, take shelt shelter only of this aspect of Krishna, this external aspect of Krishna. So why is it then we hear about taking shelter of Krishna in the spiritual energy, but we see it as like not practical? Because we don't have faith. To have faith is um, something extremely rare. Um, uh, in, in one article of Back to Godhead, Srila Prabhupada, even before he came to America, he wrote that many um, posed themselves as Vaishnavas. They were Kantimala and Tilak and Dhoti and so on. But because he is a chemist, but uh, he said when they're put in how is he said in acid test or something like this of uh, n their genuinity of their spiritual consciousness uh, their mm, majority of them are just mundaners <laughs> that means in, in reality they don't have trust and faith in Krishna in Krishna's <coughs> protection they have faith in different material protections more than in Krishna uh, so uh, they are afraid the um, mm, the consequence is that they are afraid they are always afraid because fear is one of the aspects of material life like uh, eating sleeping mating and fearing defending and, but this defending is fearing, is, is, is the consequence of fear, so that we seek shelter in, in different uh, ways, for example, house or clothing and so on, is expression of material uh, fear of our discomfort or, or fear of losing our existence. And so they... Mm, they w they work somewhere in difficult situation just to protect their bodies uh, and they they are afraid to lose their job even if the uh, it if it is not conducive for a spiritual life so we can see that this real deep trust is extremely rare and um extreme expression of, of trust is uh, by Shiva Stakur. Um, you know what this means? <laughs> yes. He is just depending on Krishna. Uh, and he's prepared to die if Krishna doesn't care for him. Yes. And he, Krishna explains that he always uh, do take care of Krish uh, of of his devotees. Ananya Shinte Antumam Yajanah Parupasati, Tisham Nitya Bhyuktanam, Yoga Kshima Baham Yaham. That those who are um under the Lord's protection, he cares for them. He 
he carries what they lack and protects what they have. <laughs> Personally, I think Bilbar Mangaltak, who was, uh, no, some other, b uh, uh, sorry? Who is who Arjuna Charya? Arjuna Charya. Arjuna Charya was this? Or was uh, to this verse? Uh, was Arjuna Charya? Okay, he crossed the line. Yes, Arjuna Charya. I, I thought it's, uh, it was someone else. But okay. Um, Arjuna Charya crossed this verse in, in, in Gita. And Krishna came to his house with, with the load of, of uh, things for him. Because he went, as you know, he went begging outside, and this day th he couldn't receive anything. And he came disappointed uh, back home. Uh, but during the, he, the, that time, the boy came uh, to his wife carrying a big load of stuff. <laughs> and he was, uh, and the wife saw that he was hurt. Uh, and he, the boy exp explained that, yes, your husband beat me very severely. <laughs> <laughs> and she was shocked because she thought that he, her husband is very, very uh, gentle person. And when he came home, she was very severe with him. Why did you beat this poor child like this? And he uh, didn't know what she's speaking about. <laughs> and then he realized that Krishna himself brought so many things mm, to his house. And he, uh, that, that his crossing in, in Gita was uh, uh, the cause <coughs> of hurting Krishna. Yes. So we should develop uh, deep faith in Krishna. This is the message. And take shelter only of Krishna. Yes. And these other things that if we do in this material world, uh, that it seems to be uh, care for our protection, is just to take burden of Krishna's shoulders for protecting us. Understand? We should do our part what is in our power. Uh, but we leave it on Krishna, uh, everything. Um, it's the example in, in um, Journey Home, when um, I think it was uh, near Varshana somewhere in the forest, there was some leopard uh, who killed many people. And um, Radhanat Maharaj came to, 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 to his ashram and they were sleeping outside. They didn't have any shelter. <coughs> and he asked, um, uh, in fact, he saw that this, uh, this uh, sage who was living uh, on the top of the mountain uh, went to sleep with, with some stick. <laughs> and he asked, him, what do you have this stick for? And he explained that this man-eating leopard is uh, roaming about these forests. <laughs> so I have for my protection this stick. And he asked him, do you think that little stick will protect you from the leopard? He said, no, but I have to do my part and Krishna will do the rest. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is our protection. We, we know that uh, these things, material things, will not protect us. But we do our part. But we rely on Krishna. So this is the, the proper attitude. That we don't just put everything on Krishna and we do nothing. But uh, that we do whatever is needed, but we realize that these things will not protect us in reality that just Krishna will protect us. Hare Krishna. You have another question? Yeah, I have. Um, it's kind of follow-up. I 
feel like the to have full faith is to make me more stupid. Like I, I have faith, but to a certain point, uh-huh. Krishna provides certain facilities and make sure things happen in the right way, then my faith will stay. You know, I have faith in you, Krishna, as long as... I don't think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, what type of faith is that and how to move forward from that? And Krishna will lead you. <laughs> will deepen your faith and uh, also will put tests on your way um, to test your faith. Yes, ja, Haman, Grichna, mi, Hanisha, Hanisha, the To Danam, the Jantas, ja, Svajana, Duka, Dukitam. Krishna explained, and I really love some, I take uh, him everything away from him. <laughs> and then the relatives will blaspheme him and, and leave him alone. <laughs> so, but he does it. In in different manners to different devotees, one uh, to one he t- takes everything immediately. Uh, to others, really, very uh, gradually. And for example, also Prabhupada, he was. Uh, it is explained by by best managers that he was the best possible manager when they uh, read Prabhupada Lilamrita and so on. Um, he was genius, in fact. Mm. Mm. They say that, they, uh, that every company should have slogans. Slogans so short that they can fit on a t-shirt. And Prabhupada had many such slogans to fit on the t-shirt. Chant and be happy. Yeah. Books are the basis. <laughs> um, um, purity is the force. He had many such slogans that f- can fit on the T-shirt. So he was perfect manager. But nevertheless, his business failed. Whatever effort he put in his business, uh, it failed. So Krishna first took him everything and then gave him everything later on then he had millions of dollars on his uh, disposal so we can see that Krishna will take us through different situations in our life and I have also my personal experience I lost my job eight years ago and neither I nor my wife had any job since regular uh, but Krishna took care of us uh, we are not in debt we have never been in debt <laughs> no debt <laughs> yes <laughs> we don't lack anything we have everything and Krishna takes care of us of course we do something mm. And Krishna sends us some something to to make some money, some small ama- amount, but it's enough for us. So Krishna always takes care. This is my experience. <laughs> yes, Hare Krishna. Anything else? Yes. So you are stressing in the last two days that. The four commands means a severe offense to to the Vaishnavas and to Gaur and to Jai and India. But even though they made such an offense, they still got the darshan of the Lord. They realized that this is the Lord. Uh, they were attracted to the smell of the tulsi and the lotus feet of the Lord. So then they actually then they became the devotees. So one could say, and wherever. The devotees are then there is the spiritual world so no matter where they are there is the spiritual world so one could argue that this offense actually had positive results for them 
Mm, yes, because every contact with the Vaishnava is positive. So they contacted Jai and Vijay, and they were blessed. Even they, though they cursed them, they were still blessed. The Lord came running just be- because of this commotion, big commotion in front of the door of Vaikuntha. And then uh, they, they smelled this aroma from Tulsi on the Lord's, Lord's feet. And uh, then their mind were converted from impersonal um, attraction to impersonal liberation to, to the Lord's Lotus feet. Yes, by the mercy of the devotee, they became devotees. Um, Kumaras, uh, they, uh, by the mercy of Jai and Vijay, the, uh, the Lord came and therefore they they sent it, this um, tulsis from the Lord's lotus feet. Um, yes. Sorry? <laughs> yes. So, uh, and we can see also. Mm, mm, these two uh, sons of Kuvera, Nala Kuvara and Manigriva, they were also offensive to Narada Muni. But since they contacted him, they were blessed by Narada Muni. Well, one could argue that the difference between them and the Kumaras was that the sons of Kuvera realized their mistake and they immediately repented and asked Narada Muni to not make them so sick. No. No, he n- no. They were so arrogant. They they didn't cover even their bodies. Yeah. Okay. But after Narada Muni cursed them to become trees, and then they were they realized their mistake. No, that's how I understood the story. Mm, they just become the trees on the garden of uh, Nanda. I think so. It's not explained that they were repenting. It is. That's Uh, but I, uh, as you were talking, it seemed like uh, after seeing the Lord and the Lord speaking to them, they did repent for their curse. They were yes, yes. Uh, then they, of course, they realized uh, and they retained even their memory when they were uh, trees. So this was Narada's mercy. <laughs> they were standing there naked. <laughs> <laughs> For thousand uh, yeah. celestial years, not, not just, not just uh, earth years, but thousand celestial years. Yes. Talking about the Kumaras, the Kumaras repented, didn't they? Uh, yes, they repented. Yes, they repented. But um, because this was Lord Lila, he wanted uh, them to go. Uh, that he could, could fight with them, uh, with someone. <laughs> Yes, please. Thank you for the talk and the recitation. Uh, this Lila of um, the sons of Kuvera, uh, I just wanted to say something I really appreciate about the Lord is that he becomes imprisoned so that they so they bound him up. And in his imprisonment, it's so auspicious that he liberates others. So because he, w- he will keep him in prison, but then these two Kumara, I mean, these two sons of Kuvera, Kuvera became liberated. So mm-hmm. it's just tying in with that theme of how even in these situations of curses and what looks I- inauspicious in the material world it would be inauspicious but whenever it's in connection with devotees or Krishna it only has these positive effects because generally like in the material world if someone's in prison that everyone suffers the family is upset they miss the person it's just there's no auspiciousness in that but when the world becomes bound up then people become liberated yes it's only positive or only all good as the mind Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for this comment. Okay. Thank you very much. Grant Raj, Shimad Bhagavatam Ki, Jai, Shri Bhagavad Ki, Jai, Gaurabhakta Vrinda Ki, Jai, Nitai Gaur Pramanandi Hri.